Hello, and welcome to DIY in 5. I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and today we're putting on our photographer hat. What is that? Get out of here. Many of us take tons of photos every day with our smartphones, but what about those DSLRs or point-and-shoot cameras we have? It's time to bring them out of storage and put them to use. In today's episode of DIY in 5, we'll teach you what that dial full of letters and icons means on your camera. You know you've always wondered why there were pictures of somebody running or a tulip on there. For this episode, we'll use an entry-level Canon DSLR. Your camera might have some slightly different options that we'll point out along the way. Let's start off by examining the automatic modes. This is the setting we all start out on, where we let the camera do all the work. It's great if you just need to take a picture of something, but the picture itself usually won't be that interesting. For entry-level cameras like this Canon, there are also automatic modes for specific image types. If you're shooting a portrait, landscape, close-up, sports, or night shots, these are easy options. The camera has some prefix settings that it thinks worked best in these situations. These might produce photos that are a little more interesting than automatic, but generally they'll still not be the best. The path less traveled and all that jazz. Okay. This is where the fun really starts and you can start to experiment with your photos. Semi-automatic modes. All of the next settings we mention allow you to manually control one part of the picture while the camera adjusts the other settings for you. First up is Program Auto Exposure, the P setting, which allows you to adjust the exposure of your picture. You can make the picture brighter or darker based on your preference. Next up is Aperture Priority. You see AV here, but most other cameras will use A. This allows you to change your f-stop and gives you that cool effect where your subject is in focus and everything behind is out of focus. The lower the f-stop means less of your image is in focus, while a higher f-stop will give you more of the scene in focus. Finally, we have shutter priority. On Canons, they use TV, but on other cameras, you'll see S. Use this setting if any of your scene is moving or you're not using a tripod and you want to minimize motion blur. If you still want to give your subjects a little motion blur, use a shutter speed of between 30 and 250. But if you want to freeze your subject, use 4000 or higher. Once you've learned some of the partial control settings, you can move on to manual mode. Here you can change aperture, shutter speed, and exposure to create just the type of shot you want. Manual mode gives you the most flexibility to create stunning images, but it will take lots of practice to master. The last thing we should mention about manual mode is ISO. That's your camera's sensitivity to light. Generally speaking, the lower the ISO, the crisper your image will look. But if you're shooting at night or in other situations with lower light, you might need to increase the ISO to get the image you want. Guys, it's a little dark in here. Okay, phew, that's better. What are some of the coolest pictures you've ever taken? Share them with us online with the hashtag DIYIn5. Or tell us your pro tips in the comments below. Please give this video a like, share it with a friend, and hit that subscribe button to see more DIY videos from Kingston. I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and remember, photography is a developing hobby.